Hey guys, and how's it going? You know what? Hang on a minute. Echoes in the garage. Reset, take two. Hey guys, how's it going? Here we are over a year later with my uh, 5 Seaghost 130. It's been a little over a year and a half since I first bought it. I got it in November of 2016 during a Black Friday sale. It was $100 off back then, so I just I couldn't pass it up. So I jumped on it, and here we are. It's June 2018. This is a 2016 model, so we're going to go over it. Uh, show you guys the things that I've found out about it that kind of wear out over time or hold up or whichever and just let you know if I still think it's worth the money and is it a cheap kayak or is it a great deal for how much you're paying for it. So uh, as always with all my kayak reviews we'll go ahead and we'll start from the front and work our way back and I'll go over every little thing I can. Alright so up here we got our front hatch and our paddle holder and of course our carry handle. Uh, I don't mind the carry handle up front, it's holding up good, it's just solid plastic, the screws haven't come loose or anything on it. You got your drain plug up here in the front too, that I really never ever use. I mean it's a pretty dry kayak, the only time it gets wet is when you're washing it off. And uh, when we get towards the back, I'll show you where that problem comes in. But uh, Number one thing on the hatch, the screws they use to uh, put in the hatch right here, after use of opening it and closing it a lot, these screws start coming loose and they'll start backing out. So once in a while you have to keep an eye on those and get a Phillips head screwdriver and just keep tightening them down. Uh, on this, I wish Vibe would have used a straight bolt and ran a bolt all the way through, a stainless steel bolt, and put a nut on the end. That way you don't have to worry about this problem, but you have to keep an eye on these screws or else they'll come out and then there goes your hatch. <laughs> so be watching that, that's uh, the first problem up here. Still locked, still seals real well. Still keep the uh, little red bag in here, like I'll put in my lunch box or, you know, uh, if it's winter time, I'll put my hoodie or my jacket in there. Inside, still clean, dry. This is where I keep my fish finder at, or the battery for my fish finder, I should say. Uh, just put some Velcro in there. I'm probably going to do a whole nother video about all the mods I've made to this kayak because I get a lot of questions from you guys asking, oh man that's cool, can you show us this mod, can you show us how you did that, can you show us how you did this. So I'm going to make that a whole separate video. Right now we're just going over the kayak and things that's wearing out on it and things to keep an eye on, you know, as if you buy a sea ghost and over time things that happen to it. It's like I said, for really up front on here. Uh, Let's just watch these screws. Matter of fact, I need to tighten these down already. They're backed out probably about a quarter of an inch. So I need to tighten these down. All right, we'll just go ahead and move on down to the main console. All right, up here in the console, uh, the, probably the first thing I'm gonna go towards is this gasket that goes all around this lid right here where these two ends meet. Uh, it's just metal and it will rust real easy and I take my kayak out the salt water So it didn't take long at all for this to rust uh, If this is a big problem for you and you want to fix it You just take these pieces bend them out get some uh, truck bed liner or some flex seal or some kind of sealant in a spray can or Some plasti dip or something like that some kind of coating and you can coat these ends and it will prevent them from rusting like that So that's a good fix for that uh, the lid itself hasn't warped, hasn't cracked. I uh, use the cup holder all the time. If you guys see from some of my videos, I use it either to hold my scent to spray on my baits or I even use it as like a little live well when I'm using uh, minnows or shiners and things like that. Scotty mount holders everywhere on this thing. Uh, me personally, I almost think there's too many. It's taking up space for stuff that I could be using it for something else. I almost wish these three weren't here and you just had these up here. That way I got more room to mount other things. I like the pre-drilled holes, believe it or not, uh, like up here in this front part, the pre-drilled holes worked out great for me to mount uh, my hinge kit. So the little pre-drilled holes, I love that. But it's just, there's so many Scotty mount holders, I feel like it's hard for me to uh, put anything else in here. Just a lot of, and all these, all this fills up water. You can't put a drain in it because it would fill up the inside of your console. All these fill up with water and you 
Oh, it's, it gets to be a pain sometimes, but it ain't that bad. I have to disconnect and dump it all the way over, and then I'm spilling water all into my kayak. Uh, the inside, the little compartment, this is one of the things that drew me towards this kayak was having all this room. I like having a lot of storage, and this is easily accessible. Yeah, I keep things uh, scale, emergency jerky. You know, you never know when you forgot your sandwich or something, which has happened to me, and you know, you get hungry. Always keep a bottle of water, like a spare bottle of water on your kayak, guys, because you don't know what's going to happen to you out there. And you got to have water, especially uh, down here in the south in the summer, you sweat so much. You know, it doesn't hurt to have that one extra bottle of water. And another necessity is uh, bringing some toilet paper in the bag because when nature calls, it calls. A little flashlight. You know, just, just things like that is what I keep in here. And you just screw it back with your straps. The straps are still holding up pretty good. Oh, I got a piece of Velcro right here to attach my GoPro box. Of course, a lot of you guys know that subscribe to my channel about the fish finder install I did. And I got my fish grips right here. Uh, the little measuring board that came on here. Uh, I kind of spiced it up a little bit and made it easier to see with some white lettering. You can use either a paint pen or nail polish. So that's what I did with that. I like having this measuring board up here. Centimeters, yeah, it may be good for overseas, but it doesn't do me any good here in the United States. I mean, I don't measure a fish by centimeters, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, okay, the foot pedals, the foot mounts that you have right here for the rudder, uh, there's they're supposedly, when after you push them out or in, they're supposed to pop back up on their own in the default position. No, it, it doesn't happen like that. The springs, the little springs that they have in here, they wear out, as you can see. When you push them down, they stay down. And I, I spray silicone on these things and WD-40 and everything I can to try to help them out, but it, it doesn't work. And uh, I even had one of the springs fall out, but that, that's not on Vibe. The reason one of the springs fell out because there was a video going around on YouTube about how to set up your rudder. And the guy in the video says you want the rudder pedals even with your foot pegs. That's a lie. You don't want that. You want it to have it a little bit in so there's tension on those springs so they don't fall out. So if you're setting this up and you come ac came across that video, do not have these pedals, yeah, your rudder pedals, even with your foot pegs, you want it a little bit inward. But right now, my rudder's pretty much useless, and I'll show you why here in just a second. Oh, the rail system they have installed, and you see I'm putting them to get use. I have a ram mount rod holder. I got them on each side. I just took this one off, so that way it's not blocking the view. Uh, I love these rail systems. It comes on here, big, big track, too. It's not it's like a little four inch piece it's actually a big track so that was under the, you know thumbs up on vibe for doing that uh, paddle holder paddle holder starting to get worn out a little bit it's just the bungee the bungee's getting old it's getting loose and I think I'm going to re-bungee this this whole kayak I want to get some uh, orange bungee strap and put orange on here I think that orange and cambo really pop and plus it stands more outdoor colors right orange and green all right and uh, we'll go ahead and move on back to the seat all right, the seat they have for Vibe Kayaks is a crazy good seat. I've sat in this thing for like eight hours at a time and it's super, super comfortable. I love the back support, the frame. I have no corrosion, no problems with the frame at all, even the hardware. I have none of the nuts or bolts or anything come loose and they're all lock nuts, so they're not coming loose, which is something they ought to do with all these lids they have on here and all the points that have regular screws in them. Uh, the straps haven't worn out, they haven't broke on me. They use good hardware. This seat is like crazy good. And uh, some people will go around and they'll sand this coating off of the rails and it turns it into like a brass color. To me, I'm just, I'm happy with it as is. Uh, it doesn't matter if you get wet or you get back in the kayak soaked. Water just drains right through the seat. So that's good. You have the two positions. I, I currently like to keep mine in the high position because you're really not that high. I mean, you're only moving up maybe two or three inches. You know, I, I wouldn't mind actually if it sat a little bit higher. 
but to do that uh, the seat slopes forward some now why they designed it that way I don't know instead of having it set level but that is an easy do-it-yourself fix you just get some small uh, PVC pieces and you can stick it underneath these legs right here and use it as a spacer and it will raise it up a little bit level and get you just a little bit more height on it. Uh, speed with this kayak, I, I can paddle along pretty good, especially in a current. Current has not been my enemy with this kayak. Wind, on the other hand, has been. I hate paddling against the wind with this thing. Between me acting as a big sail and the stability of making this kayak so wide, the wind catches this thing real good. Uh, so current, no problem with current. I, I can go over current. You got to work a little bit harder, but it's not that big of a deal. Not as much as the wind. But uh, going back to the seat, what I do, I leave the seat in here at all times. Uh, when I'm transporting it or fishing or whatever, the only time I take it out, of course, is when I go to clean it. And really all I do to clean the kayak is just spray everything down with fresh water. Maybe once every other month, I'll actually wash it down with boat soap and water. But anyway, I keep the uh, seat in here. And to keep it from flying up from the wind and putting a strain on these straps what I do is is I fold it down and I got some real small bungee cord and they got these pad eyes right here on the front and I just hook the bungee cord on these front pad eyes when I'm transporting it and the bungee keeps the seat down and keeps it from flying up and then when you get to where you want to fish just unhook the bungees hook it on the back of the seat back here and they're out of the way and you can fish so that's a good little way to something for you guys if you uh, keep taking your seat in and out of your kayak now you don't really have to you can just strap everything in and strap the front of it down uh, underneath uh, the storage I really the only thing I keep underneath here is my net which it fits perfect if you have one of these fray bill folding uh, expandable nets they fit great up underneath here. And trust me, they come in handy. There's a lot of times I should have it out and I lose fish because I'm too lazy to pull it out at the moment. Uh, the tackle tray holders, I don't have any tackle trays in here right now because uh, I mostly use that for freshwater fishing. I don't take as much with me uh, freshwater fishing, but they work great. I love them. Uh, it's just when you have a tackle tray in here in these slots, it's hard to get to the bungee to get around it to hook it on. So what a lot of people are doing is, is they'll take some strap, like some old strap like this, or paracord or something, and they'll sew onto it and make a little tab so it makes it easier to grab. So I've yet to do that, but something I need to do, and it's an idea for you guys. All right, on to the back hatch. All right, the back hatch. Seals really good. This rubber seal that they have around it, still holding up well. I haven't put any kind of Vaseline or silicone or anything on here and it's still holding up I would recommend that you do that and now that I think about it I'm probably gonna do that after this video to keep it from dry rotting and drying out Same thing with the screws in the front hatch these screws right here You have to keep an eye on them because they will back out I don't go in this hatch as much as I do my front one So that's the reason these are still good and I keep things you know sunblock mosquito repellent some Gatorade, more uh, just in case action, and I got my stinky pants or stinky britches stringer. Just in case I forget my cooler at the house. But uh, having your fish on a stringer in salt water isn't as always the greatest idea because uh, the tax man may come along and eat your catch right off your stringer. And if you had in a smaller kayak, it might pull you in with him. As you can see, it, it won't just close. It's The seal is so good, you have to really mash it down in there to get a seal. And then it locks up pretty well. None of these screws have backed out. So that's good. You can see the silicone where they got silicone around here. And it hasn't. Then you got your rod holders. Uh, they fill up with water. And then you got to stick like a shop vac down in there to suck them out. Or just take your kayak and roll them over. Uh, if you're like, oh, well, just put your little covers on there, right? Just stick your covers on there. That'll keep it from getting water in it. 
not so much. You see how easy that was? It just, they just want to pop open so easy. Uh, a way to fix that is go to Home Depot, Lowe's, Ace, wh wherever. Get you some Velcro and you cut a little square and put here and a little square to put on the end of the tab. And then you can Velcro it close. Another one of those things I haven't gotten around to and I probably should. But you can see how easy that opens up. Same thing with the back one. Not that big of a deal though. Oh well. You know, it's petty, but it's still there. I mean, they haven't came off. They haven't, they haven't dry rotted and it came off. Same thing again. You probably want to put some silicone or something on it to keep these from drying out. Uh, the whole kayak all over the top is a rough texture. And I discovered you cannot put stickers on there. So if you want to, you know, kind of spice up your kayak and want to show off your brand, uh, the only places you're going to be able to do it is on the hatch, the front hatch, towards the bottom on the side of the kayak where it's slick for, you know, for water to come over and, and on the inside of the kayak, on the inside walls. And that's it. So you're not putting a sticker on any of this unless you like get sand it down crazy smooth. That's about the only way you're going to do it. I don't know why Vibe did that. I just rather have the whole thing slick. It also makes it easier to clean. The sand and stuff will come right off. The only places that I would not want slick is the tank well back here to keep things from sliding around. And then, up, of course, up front where you're standing at, you know, where you're sitting in. So you have good grip of your feet when you go to stand up. But as for the sides and everything else along the kayak, I wish they would have left this part smooth. That way people can add their stickers and add their brands and, and it just cleans up easier when you have a smooth surface. Everything just falls right off where everything on this, like mud, wants to hang on to all this stuff a lot more. So Vibe, if you're watching, keep that in mind, please. All right, let's uh, go ahead and we'll go to the tank well now. All right, tank well's doing good. I haven't had any, any kind of warpage or bowing or anything like that. Was I keep my kayak out of the sun. That's the biggest thing. Guys, keep your kayaks out of the sun or they will warp and you will have problems. If you can at least keep them in the shade, like on the side of the house or under a shed or keep something over it, it'll help the life of it so much more. But uh, my tank well's doing good. They have, uh, they also have blocks if you want to stick up underneath here to keep them from dipping in. But I, I really haven't had a problem with mine. A lot of people get crazy and they'll take non-skid and cut it out to spell out vibe and you know a lot of all these things. But I keep a little igloo cooler if you guys seen a lot of my videos. Uh, my anchor, which vibe does not give you an anchor. Uh, I got this from my Pescador 120 from Perception. It came with it and that was a $400 kayak and they give you an anchor and an anchor trolley and this is an eight dollars $900 kayak and vibe doesn't give you that so vibe I'm just saying I think people rather have an anchor and an anchor trolley come with their kayak and then choose their own paddle than be given a paddle by vibe which there's been a lot of complaints about their paddles coming apart too so be wary of that if you're looking to get a vibe kayak the kayak itself is I haven't had a problem with uh, there's more tracks back here I really haven't moved uh, these bungees back here but it'd be great. I haven't thought of this and I probably should. I would like to make a GoPro pole to put in these tracks instead of having to use up one of my rod holders in my cooler. But uh, I keep my cooler, I keep my anchor back here and right now the mullet's running so I also keep a uh, my cast net back here. I have an eight foot cast net. I haven't thrown it out of the kayak yet but I definitely see me doing that in the future this year. So be looking, looking for that. Hopefully, uh, don't fall into the water. And that's really it about splash well. I got nothing really bad to say about it. So, but I do have something bad to say about this next thing. Ah, the rudder system that you get. I know, nice Crocs, right? Well, I feel like being comfortable today. The rudder system, it worked awesome when I first got it. And after about, well, I don't know, about eight months, uh, these cords started wearing out. You had to keep tightening them and I didn't want to cut all this off because you know I didn't really know where I was going to adjust it to uh, This rope here likes to come out of the tracks the rope that pulls your rudder down It likes to come out of the track sometime. So then your 
sitting it up there in the front, trying to force it to come down when you need it. You got your little carrying piece, which definitely have this on when you're transporting it. This doesn't want to lock in that good, and the wind will grab it and be pulling on it and getting it to flop all around. So definitely use your little rudder holder. The back handle. This thing is really awkward to carry like this. I almost wish they would have extended it or find some kind of way to turn it more like the front handle like this. Where you're in the back, it makes you want to put this in your hip when you go to carry it versus if you have it like that, you can kind of hold it out to the side. That's why it's so much easier to carry the front of this kayak than it is the back. So I hope there's a way they can get to turn this handle around. It makes it way more easier and more comfortable to carry it like that. If uh, any of my other vibe owners out there agree with me, you know, please leave a comment down below. Let me know. Or if I'm just being petty, same thing. I mean, I, I can still load it in the truck. It's just a lot easier. It would be a lot easier if it was this way. But I know that would extend out your tank well. Or if anything, man, just get rid of this piece, lower it down, and make it flush and stick it down there and that gives you even more tank well space. Alright, before how I was saying uh, the only time water gets into the kayak is when I'm washing it off at the end of the day. Well, it gets in through these holes right here where the cords run in for the rudder. Now that's no fault of Vibe. They had to have any kind of rudder system that you get, you have to have a way to get your rudder controls up to the pedals or where you're working. It's just something uh, to be aware of when you're spraying your kayak off and you definitely want to clean this rudder off because it has a metal spring and metal parts in here and if you're in salt water like me you've got to get that salt water off and you want this to rinse this thoroughly but just keep in mind when you're all the water that's going to be coming in here so I don't know if there's a way to plug it and keep these still operational but I just deal with it when I get done. I open up all my hatches and usually the, the little amount of water that's in there will evaporate out. Now the reason I say that basically I'm hardly ever using this anymore is because I cannot keep this rudder to stay down in the water. Because the little piece that secures the line, and I'll show you in just a minute, does not hold the line anymore. And what a lot of guys do is they'll take, open this up and they'll take the spring and flip it around backwards so it's always wanting to be down. Instead of wanting to spring up, it always want to spring down. Well, I don't want that because there's going to be times where I'm going through really crazy shallow water and I don't want to damage this rudder on oysters or just sandbars or when I pull it up on the bank to get it up out of the water or if I have to shove it up on the bank or back into something I don't want to damage this rudder I want to be able to have it up on top not always want to be down so uh, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about right now of why it's not holding it down and this was a problem I saw it's from the get-go as soon as I got it I knew it was gonna be a shoe down the road all right this little guy is your main problem all it is is some plastic teeth where you're supposed to grab this ball, pull your rudder down, push this down like so, and it's supposed to hold it. As you can see on its own, it's so weak that the spring itself is pulling it up. It just takes a little effort and it pulls it back up again. Vibe, there's got to be a better system than this to hold this rope down. There should be like a small cleat I think would be a lot better than this because this is going to wear out every year. You could call Vibe and you can probably get a new piece like this but it's going to wear out the very next year. You're going to be calling them again and again and again. Even if I take my finger and push that down in there, if I hit anything, it comes right up. No problem. I'm just using the tips of my fingers. Look at that. You see how bad it slides and the rudder is already sticking up. 
it's sticking straight out, kind of like a duck tail, instead of being in the water. So, there you go. That's one of the things that will fail on you when you buy this kayak. Uh, I'm sure there's somebody out there that's done came up with a do-it-yourself rig, a better way to secure this. If they, if there is, please leave it down in the comments to help the rest of us out so we can secure this better. Well, there it is, the Vibe Seaghost 130 over a year and a half later and how it's holding up. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is, is this kayak has some oyster rash on it. It's got scrapes from barnacles and dragging it up on boat ramps and if someone if you're someone that really cares about aesthetics and you can't stand to see those scratches in there you can take a heat gun and like a plastic scraper and heat it up and take that plastic scraper and it'll smooth all those scratches right back out and it'll make it look a lot better but I'm more about functionality so it really doesn't bother me that much but in case it does for you you know there's a little tip for you to take care of that uh, over a year and a half later do I feel that it's worth the money? The answer is most definitely yes. For the price that you pay for this kayak, you're getting the same amount of stuff that you're going to pay for like a Predator that want, they want like 12 to 1300 for. You know, or uh, was it the lure, feel free lure? Same thing, about 13, 1500 when you're getting this one for about $800. So there's some little things I need to tweak, definitely. Like I said, the, the big one for me is this is this rudder cable right here and the rudders themselves. You know, if you're going to put a rudder on the kayak and it's your product, stand behind it. You know, you have a field staff for a reason, to give you feedback on what's going on. You know, there's a lot of field staff out there, Vibe field staff, and I hope that they're talking to Vibe. If not, I'm making this video for you guys, the consumers, who are thinking about getting a Vibe Seaghost and you're wanting to know, is it going to be worth my money? For me to spend this money to get this to get this kayak and for me it was yes I, I still use it this day i don't see me getting rid of it anytime soon uh, i wanted a kayak that i wanted a lot of storage in i wanted to be able to stand up and fish out of and i wanted it stable and i wanted a nice comfortable seat and i got all those things with this kayak and if i was going to get another kayak like uh like i said the predator or, the old, or something like that it, i'd be paying a lot more money where you're saving that money and you can put it towards accessories like rod holders and fish finders and you know and the moon's the limit whatever you want to put on it so I love this kayak I mean I'm gonna stick with it for a while I, I, it's heavy yes you better have a buddy or don't plan a, or get you a nice cart because they say it's 75 pounds maybe bare bones 75 pounds but it's probably more around 90 it's not a light kayak uh, I'll let you know that right now. So have yourself a good system for that. You're not going to be just manhandling it, throwing it up on the roof of your car or the roof of your uh, Explorer or whatever. If, you know, if you are, you better be eating your Wheaties. That's all I can say. But there's my review of it. I hope it was helpful to y'all. If it was, please smash that thumbs up, like, thumbs up button. It helps me out. Give it a like. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Share the video if you got friends that are looking for a kayak. And remember, we do more in Densmore. We'll see you out there next time. Take care. Densmore Outdoors is proudly sponsored by Bruiser Baits. Fish the best. Vexen Rods. Strike first with Vexen. and real gear, make fishing your style.